hey welcome back again in this video we are talking about expected shortfall now in the last video I already talked about VAR and the various approaches in which you can go ahead and calculate the value at risk but we realized that VAR has a major limitation that it doesn't tell us about the magnitude of the losses beyond the VAR level right I mean if my VAR is exceeded how bad can my losses be that is something that VAR doesn't tell me and that's why we need another risk measure now have a look at this particular histogram that we have seen in the last video as well and just imagine that a portfolio manager or a risk manager he has estimated his VAR at this level so VAR at 5% is somewhere around 15.69% now he's pretty much comfortable with the estimation of VAR and all of a sudden the company faces a loss which is beyond this VAR level and as you can see this is the biggest loss that the company has faced right around 28.9% more than 10% difference in the estimated VAR now clearly this is not going to be a good situation for the manager and this losses will even be more if the portfolio is worth million or billions of dollar right now guys check it out here uh, I've got the VAR model of the LTCM that is long term capital management now this is a perfect example of why we need some other measure than the value at risk let me tell you that LTCM they made heavy use of the VAR model as part of their risk management and they estimated their 10 day VAR to be around 320 million dollars okay so this was their estimated VAR which is kind of three standard deviations away from this mean right here right so we have the mean at the center so around three standard deviations away from the mean they estimated their war but in reality they faced losses of almost one billion dollars and it was estimated that this loss that they suffered was around eight standard deviations away from this mean so clearly their dependence on the war model led to the failure of LTCM and this also suggested that we need a better measure than value at risk so let's welcome the new risk measure that you will be seeing throughout the FRM curriculum and that is the expected shortfall right here so what exactly is the expected shortfall expected shortfall is a risk measure that does take account of expected losses beyond this war level uh, whatever losses we have above this war level expected loss will take all these losses into consideration now one important point to note is that when we are calculating the expected shortfall we exclude this VAR amount or the percentage okay we do not include this we just calculate or we take the average of all these losses which is above or beyond this VAR level so hopefully now you are clear with the concept of expected shortfall it is just the average of all these losses that you see right here which is beyond this war level it's average of all these losses that's the meaning of expected shortfall okay and one more important thing that we need to make a note of is that expected shortfall will always be greater than the war level because we are taking the average of losses which is greater than this war when we now let's solve two questions related to expected shortfall all right so let's calculate the expected shortfall see example one var of the various confidence level are given in the below table what is the expected shortfall at 97.5 percent confidence level so as you can see i'm given the confidence level and all these associated var of each of these confidence level okay but I want to find the expected shortfall at 97.5 percent so all these confidence level which are below this 97.5 I will just ignore all these value at risk because expected shortfall is the average of all the value at risk which is above this bar okay whatever confidence level we want to find above this confidence level we will have average of all the value at risk now this question is very simple 
but most people what they do is that they get confused whether to include this value at risk which we want to find the confidence level for the answer is no we do not include this we just take the average of all the value at risk which is above this var okay that's what the definition of expected shortfall says fairly simple so the expected shortfall will be average of this 150 160 175 190 divided by 4 and the answer is 168.75 now this is my expected shortfall the average of all these value at risk now just notice one thing that this expected shortfall at 97.5 percent this is greater than the value at risk at 97.5 percent all right and this proves that expected shortfall will be greater than the value at risk now let's look at a formula based question of the expected shortfall for a hundred million dollar portfolio the expected one week return and standard deviation are given okay so this is the mean and this is the standard deviation calculate the one week expected shortfall with a 95 percent confidence level now when we are not given the value at risk like this so we cannot simply take average of all the bars so what we do is that we have we we can calculate the expected shortfall with the help of this particular formula right here now all this formula says is that we take the mean we add the standard deviation which is also given and e to the negative z score divided by 2 okay negative is because we are going to the left tail right we want the z score on the left tail so that's why we have this negative sign we just square the z score and divide it by 2 now 1 minus x is the 1 minus this confidence level so i can also write it as alpha and then multiply by 2 times pi all right so let's solve this question right here we start off with the mean we add the standard deviation and we make adjustments to the standard deviation okay the negative z score z score 95 percent confidence level that means five percent significance level and five percent on one tail will be 1.65 all right square divided by two denominator we have the alpha that is 0 0.05 that's what the significance or the alpha and two times 3.1416 finally we get the answer as 0 0.02744 now to get the answer in dollar terms we have the portfolio of 100 million dollar we just multiply and we get this as the final answer in dollar terms okay now there is a high probability that on the level one exam you could see a question like this and for the level two this can be a high probability question on the exam with the help of a formula you need to calculate the expected shortfall but nonetheless even for level one make sure that you are able to calculate the expected shortfall in both these methods all right so with that being said thank you so much for your time in the next video i'm going to be uploading about coherent risk measures and spectral risk measures so make sure that you subscribe to our youtube channel if you haven't subscribed yet thank you so much for your time